This is an unboxing video. No surprise for viewers of this channel. This is an unboxing video for the Terminator role-playing game, which should be also no surprise because of what we've seen so far in the video already. What I know will be a surprise is the condition of the packaging. And we'll talk about that a little later. But I want to say up front, to spoil some of the surprise, that everything that we're going to pull out of this utter wreck of a package is fine. Any damage that I find is the sort of damage that can actually happen in manufacturing and in shipping from the manufacturer to uh, the publisher and, and all that stuff. So it's nothing that I'm going to investigate or, you know, raise hell over. It's also very minor. But there are some concerns, right? You'll notice in the video in the top left of the screen that I'm examining the package before I open it. And I ordered a metal dice tin with metal dice inside it, and they are in the middle of the middle of the top, which of course was the bottom when I found it. And, you know, that may not have been an ideal placement. It certainly overloaded the package. Plus, as you're looking at the bubble wrap, you can see that the bubble wrap is not secured in any way around the products. The tin is in a Ziploc bag with bubble wrap. That's awesome. But the books themselves just have a loose wrapping of bubble wrap around them, and then this extremely thin cardboard box, which then has this very tough tape wrapped around it. And, well, as you saw, the damage to the book not the book, to the package, was extreme. Let's take that loose wrapping of bubble wrap off. Oh, how we love bubble wrap. And I'm very glad that bubble wrap was there. Just, you know, there's concerns. And we'll do a quick corner check. We should always check our corners, right? Especially if we don't know what's waiting to mess us up. So this is the director's guide. This is the screen, one of those very heavy, bulletproof-feeling screens. And you can see that the, the plastic coating has separated there at the corner. This was the corner of the thing that was in the damaged corner. But the screen itself inside, right, the shrink wrap, is fine. The paper advertisement and description insert is less fine. Did this, incur, did this occur in transit? Did this occur when it was shrink-wrapped? Did this occur anywhere between the shrink-wrapping and me? Well, obviously. But how it happened, who can say? And it's not terribly important. We see that the quick start for the Terminator is in perfect condition. It's not shrink-wrapped or anything. It's in between the two products which were shrink-wrapped, one of which is this massive cardboard screen. And finally, we get to the core book. I had some concerns. Um, I have a long history of having things sent to me here overseas and a long history of the corners being mashed flat, but everything was fine. Everything was completely fine, which really is down to luck. I think that the wrapping of the items was fine. And I think the placement of the items is probably fine. But the material, right, the cardboard material, it's just luck that it made to me, made it to me in, in one piece. So that's something to consider for the future. Now, I probably am the farthest away of anybody who is receiving anything from this, from this campaign. So I got mine. So hopefully, you'll get yours. Now, do I think this was negligence? No. Um, do I think it was willful skimming of funding? No. I think that it's a normal solution to what is a pretty abnormal product. Um, people are getting metal tins with metal dice in them, and they're you know, heavy and unusually shaped and have strong edges, and we've got these dense books and uh, and all these things. But anyway, this was my package as I received it. But 
Let's get to the exciting unboxing that I am now unveiling of the metal dice. And boom, just like with Slay Industries before them, they take your breath away. Sharp edges of a long central axis to get a good and interesting tumble going. The 10 is marked with the Terminator skull. And the digits are the font from the franchise. Right? So some of them may catch you by surprise when you look at them, like the very strong 7, for example, that you can see. But deep, dense, hard, restrictive foam inside the metal matte black container. It's awesome. It, uh, it smells like Let's Play. Let's talk about the shipping experience for a moment. Now, we know that all of the items were sent to one centralized location where they were then packed by people with a lot of experience in doing this. Then, from this point, I imagine that a variety of courier or forwarding companies will be involved in getting those packed packages to the various spots around the globe. Uh, where they are headed. So, for example, I don't imagine that the courier that I communicated with will be sending things to everybody, but it is possible. Mine was delivered by the local post office after it had been handed off by a company called Parcel Force. Now, I got good, clear, and quick communication from Parcel Force throughout the, the shipping part of the process. We got good and clear information about how shipping was going to work, how packing was going to work, where it was being done, who was doing it, and we got notifications that shipping had begun and when each of us in the different tiers of distance could expect to receive our packages. I give this top marks all the way through. The courier company immediately notified me with a tracking number which functioned from the beginning. It wasn't one of those, you may have to wait a few days for the tracking number to become active. As soon as I received the message, the tracking number gave me useful information and it updated itself regularly. There was a brief spot in the middle where it had left the UK and had not gone through customs yet in South Korea, where there was nothing, which is not really a surprise. As soon as it, was, as it was released from customs, I got a notification. Then uh, that happened to happen on the weekend. Right? So it was released from customs uh, on my Friday, and so it showed up on Monday when I wasn't home. But the local delivery service called me and asked me what I wanted to do. Did I want it to go to a you know, holding facility where I could pick it up, or did I want them to attempt delivery the following day? I opted for that, and I received the package just fine. In its, you know, kind of scary-looking condition. <laughs> and uh, so the only other comment I have is that, of course, this is an international shipment of let's say, unusual products, which can sometimes raise the curiosity of customs agents. But all of the documentation was flawlessly done, including customs forms for express package delivery from Korea. All right. So there was, you know, the, the packing slip for me in triplicate, and there were shipping forms for the host country, and there were shipping forms, the specific and correct ones that I have to use myself when I'm shipping things, um, included in the package. So, you know, top marks all the way around. My only concern is the thinness of the cardboard used in packing. So that's it. Enough of this particular line of conversation. It's taken up far too much of this unboxing video, but it is an unboxing video, and the box was the problem which had no negative ramifications for me. So let's talk a little bit about the Terminator RPG from 
Nightfall games before we close out this video. Terminator is supported by the same system that is used in Slay Industries 2nd Edition, that is S5S. And it was put together by a gentleman named Chris Shepperson, known as Shep in the comments, and maybe in real life as well. This system is quite robust. It allows for significant action to take place uh, among competent agents in Slay Industries. And I have the same expectation for the same kind of desperate and over-the-top uh, adventure combat, chases, escapes, and, and that sort of stuff in its representation here, adapted for the Terminator. The lead writer on the project was Andrew E.C. Gaska, whose name might be familiar to you if you have read or have played Alien, the role-playing game. One of his particular talents is understanding a particular IP and then presenting it in a digestible format, and the Terminator is no exception. The details of the different eras, the different equipment, the different types of Terminator, the situations that characters face, uh, ways in which uh, we can look at the situations that are common to the Terminator franchise and turn them into you know, gameable material. Uh, they're all represented here in the Terminator in uh, an easy-to-take-in format. Quick, detailed, clear, punchy writing. It's good. Now, he's not the only writer on the project. There are additional writers as well, some of whom uh, you'll be familiar with from other Nightfall games. But when we just open to the credits page at the beginning... I think there is a lot of reason to feel hope and faith, right? This is the game that you might want to stick with if you want to live when you're role-playing with the Terminator. Of course, outcomes might not allow your character to live, but you, know, you the player, will live. Players of games using S5S are trusting their fates, or the fates of their characters, to the role, really, of a single die. And that die is called the success die. And of course, the opposite of success is failure, and this die is responsible for that as well. But you don't just roll one die, you roll additional dice, which are called skill dice. And they determine degree of success. So, you roll a pool of dice, one is a different color, the rest are all the same color, and if that different colored die comes up as a success, then, at least on some level, you have achieved what you were going for. Each additional die that shows a success will increase the degree of success, and can push you you know, from an exceptional success all the way up to unbelievable success. There are four levels of these improved states of success. So we can start out with messy, and then solid, and then exceptional, and then it goes on ending with unbelievable, which is fine. There are also difficulty levels. Mundane tasks, simple tasks, challenging tasks, strenuous tasks, and insane tasks. Insane tasks, we would expect to fail. Mundane tasks, we would expect to succeed. If on any of these tests, the skill bonus that a character has to apply to the role, if that exceeds the difficulty number, then it's a success. This is our auto-success rule. All right. So target numbers can range from 4 to 16. The dice used are D10s. And so the insane target number of 16 that we expect to fail shows us that the skill bonus, which is determined by the level of the skill, which can go up to 4, 
and the attribute of the character combined is unlikely to make this possible, right? So we're dealing with small numbers. We're dealing with a small die pool, kind of a, a set die pool, and only really rolling when necessary and looking for how to go from really success, possibly with complication, through to, you know, truly stellar performance or failure or a really kind of awkward failure, the serious failure. So it's not a lot to worry about. And using the quick start or using the core rules, you can get going with the system fairly quickly. So what do you do with the Terminator? This is a question that I've heard quite a bit out there, you know, similar to Alien. Once you've met the Alien, what's it good for? Once you've fought a Terminator, what else can you do? Or can you do anything else than have a combat game with Terminators? Well, let's talk about that. The notion that some games, such as the Terminator or Alien, for example, are kind of one-trick ponies or games that you can exhaust quickly and then move on, can often be a flawed premise. It assumes that the reason to play the game is to be in the same position mentally as characters from the films are. Right? Sarah Connor knows nothing about the Terminators, and as we go through the first film, she learns about them, and she learns about her special role in you know, the coming war. She learns of the coming war. It's all a process of discovery. And while that is nice in a mystery game, I think it's not really the expectation that one picks up Terminator in order to put ourselves in the role of Sarah Connor from the first film. Why not the second film? Or any of the subsequent films? Or any of the films that you liked? or wanted a chance to redo, or, or whatever. But the idea of beginning from a position of ignorance is completely unnecessary. The same with Alien. It might be interesting to approach it from how to get the characters to the same level of, of understanding that the players have, and it might be interesting for an individual in the group to play someone who knows nothing about it. But the idea that we must always be metagaming to the point where we are intentionally limiting our understanding, as I said earlier, seems to be a, a flawed premise. Rather, a game like Terminator has you as resistance fighters. You are struggling for the survival of the species. For an open-ended campaign play, we don't really know what's going to happen. For limited run play, where we're going to play for a set number of sessions, then we might be shooting for some kind of story goal. But what is play going to be? Play is going to be the decisions and the interactions and the actions and reactions of the characters, just like in any other role-playing game. We adopt these roles, we create these characters or these sets of characters, we find ourselves in situations and we start making decisions to get ourselves out of tough spots or get ourselves into advantageous situations or to deal with threats or to create allies or friendships or whatever. So... The idea that there might not be very much that you can do with this game really is a non-starter. Well, hopefully no one was looking for brevity in this video because I guess on this channel, brevity is as elusive as a unicorn. But we've already taken a look at the dice. It's all black, all the way around, everywhere, except for the logo and the name of the game. The case is matte. 
black, and so it does have some capacity for collecting fingerprints. So it's something to be aware of, not something to worry about. It is a very tight fit. You really have to want to open it to get it out. And the dice, uh, likewise, are very, very firmly seated in very stiff foam. So it's very solid. Uh, excellent package. Super satisfied with them. The dice are killer. You may find that there are some numbers on the dice which have you know, excess paint. But out of the six dice in my set, only one of the numbers on one of the dice is a little bit affected by excess paint. So, right on. All right. What should we open first? Should we open the Game Master screen? Well, because that's the, the thing that looked like it had some damage. Let's make it so, shall we? So what is the thing that might be damaged? That is the Director's Pack booklet. One of those thin booklets that contain extra information just for the Game Master. And often we feel like, wow, I really wish this had been in the core book. But uh, sometimes we don't feel that way. <laughs> How many pages is it? It doesn't actually say. <laughs> All right. So we have... That's 11. So 14 pages, right? So there are useful tables. They aren't perforated, but they have cutting guidelines so that you can, you know, make of them what you will. <laughs> it actually says, cut here. All right, so useful tables... One, two, two pages of useful tables, a character sheet, and hacking guidelines, and different corporations and for campaign seeds and stuff like that. Also available as a PDF, which is very cool. So next, we'll take a look at the screen. You can see just how thick the screen is. You know, this is this is one of those, right? So it's a four-panel screen, art on the outside, tables on the inside. It is a very dark uh, base color with purple and white and gray tables on the inside. Don't worry, I'll show you in a moment. It's absolutely packed with tables. Okay. So going from left to right, we've got the difficulty target numbers in the spot where I'm pretty much used to finding them on a screen. We've got the different types of tests, right? We've got our difficulty target numbers, passive skill tests, margin of success. Then we get into things like encumbrance and weight. We have fear. We have ranged attack, hand-to-hand -hand attack. Damage modifiers for people, margins of success, damage modifiers for vehicles, damage modifiers related to strength, or rate of fire, or ammunition. In the third panel, we have all the skills and their related stat. We have conditions, common explosives, and melee thrown and unarmed weapons table. Then on the last panel, we have modern ranged weapons and then energy weapons as two separate tables. Kind of like it. All right. And what does it look like? Well, it is... Not passive. It's not characters standing around waiting for something to happen to them. It's characters standing around having stuff happen to them and doing things to other people, which is pretty wild. But the interior looks like this. Right. Not bad. 
bad. I like it. Okay. The Quick Start, also available as a PDF, has this very dynamic cover of the Terminator post having all of its living tissue cooked off. Right. And it is... How many pages? Oh, again with this. How many pages? There are um, sample characters at the back. They don't have page numbers on them. So the last listed page is 40. And then there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 characters. And then one blank page. Right. So it very quickly moves from, right, what is a role-play game? The Terminator RPG, what do I need to play? What are character stats, skills, skill ranks? Explains the attributes. Gives you a condensed listing of the rules with big blue boxes calling out examples, right? Doing combat, doing melee combat, doing ranged combat, um, some interesting complications, then getting into damage. Then once we get to damage, we have healing. Then we have hacking of different types. Then we have hardware. Then we have a section for the Game Master. And we have a sample adventure. Pretty cool. And then we have the core book. All right. There are a variety of covers that were available, and I ended up, you know, often I go for the, the leather-bound one because I don't particularly want anything on the cover of my games. Uh, you know, maybe a logo or something, or just the title. But uh, this time, I just really liked this cover, right? which you've seen several times in the video already. And so it is, you know, heavy. It's dense. And it's a full-color interior, as you've seen already, as it's played out across the screen. You've seen the interior several times, both in, in uh, some sections I've pulled out and an entire run from beginning to end. Um, kind of small print. Not too small. There's some cross-the-bottom art panels. There's a lot of inset art. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of use of color to direct the eye, like things for optional rules in, you know, in a, a dark blue box or uh, very clear headers with a distinctive red line. And the charts are easy to read. As I've already shown, there's a dog. That's important. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a consistent art style throughout. It's not jarring. And uh, it has a kind of animation or comic book look to it. We have the iconic characters from the movies popping up here and there. There's a lot of text. Um, and I think it's very well organized. We've already taken a look at the table of contents. If you were watching the screen, you've seen it, but it goes through the introduction of, you know, what is a role-playing game and all that stuff, through the fractured timeline, which is uh, about six pages. Uh, the campaign against the machine, so, you know, what are we actually doing in this game? Character creation, then rules and mechanics. Uh, the rules and mechanics section goes from page 100, or goes from page 52 to page 144. Then we get into the Terminators, and then you know, dealing with computers and the like, dealing with time displacement, marked for termination, <laughs> and then the last few pages are dedicated to campaigns and missions. So they start on page 208. And how many pages are there in this book? 
the last numbered page is 224. The inside cover has a QR code and it is where the index is printed. There's a character sheet as the last page. Right. Very cool. Right. So, as I said, full color, kind of a medium gloss, kind of a satin finish, feels good on the fingers. Not too much art, good art, evocative art, familiar art, and uh, basically in this style. And that is the Terminator RPG. I hope you have enjoyed this unboxing. I hope you are interested and I hope you have questions. You can seek out Nightfall Games, of course. They'll be thrilled to talk to you about their games. You can find them on DriveThru. You can find them in a variety of other places. And as fulfillment winds to a close, you'll be able to get you know, physical stuff in the usual places. So we will talk more about S5S in the future. Uh, I've got plans for doing Slay Industries second edition, and I have plans for doing the Terminator, but that's a conversation for another day. Until then, take care. <laughs>